Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the final webinar in the Navigating COVID-19 series, which looks ahead in the planning phase for companies to reopen their workplaces for their employees. We do, don't all know when this will be, uh, and we've seen that that may differ in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and England, but it's a very good time to start planning for this. And to that purpose, we're delighted to welcome two guests today, and we're tapping into their experience and the way they've worked with their own companies uh, to try and work with the people in the office space uh, to prepare themselves for when they go back. Joining us today are Aaron Taylor, Principal and Sector Leader, Arcadis, and Simon Innes, Managing Director, at Goodson Associates. Sorry, Aaron is at Stantec. There's an error in my notes there. I do apologise. Aaron is from Stantec. At the end, there will be a Q&A session with our panellists, and I'll get to how you can send questions to me on the next slide. Best experience through headphones, um, which cuts out the background noise, particularly uh, if it's a sunny day where you are and you've got the windows open. Um, good to remind everybody, I know some of you have been with these uh, housekeeping, been on the webinars before, uh, so it's good to go through this, even if you've heard it before. To ask questions, please go to the questions in the control panel, the sidebar with the controls to the right of your screen. We'll try and answer as many as possible, but don't worry, we'll also answer any others if we haven't had time to cover after the webinar. Don't worry if you miss anything, we'll be uploading this to our website in the next few days. So if you want to listen again, you can just by clicking through to the website. I'd now like to hand over to our first guest, Aaron from Stantec. Thank you. Hi Aaron, are you there? Hi everyone, I apologise, we seem to have lost Aaron at the moment on the uh, the sound. Chetna, do we have Aaron logged in? I think he's rejoining. Sorry, everybody, we've got a, a slight delay. Aaron's joining back in. We can see on the screen now that he's coming back into us, so he'll be here shortly. The joys of technology. We've been speaking to Aaron over the last couple of weeks and we've never had this problem, so apologies. It's always uh, sod's law, isn't it, on these sort of things? I'm sure he'll be with us as quickly as he can. Is that you, Aaron? It is. Apologies. I've had a bit of a, a bit of an IT crisis. Um, no can worries. everybody hear me now? Yes, we're glad you're back. If you crack on now, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Is that time going to come out of my time, my short time? Um, <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for bearing with me with my IT issues. Uh, I'm Aaron Taylor, Principal and Sector Lead uh, for Stantec. Um, as Daryl mentioned, and uh, I'll be talking to you about preparing the office for a uh, safe return. Uh, next slide, please. So today I'll be uh, quickly running you through some of the uh, core issues of, of the talk. Introduction briefly to Stantec. Um, the goal of the work that we've been doing uh, to try and develop strategies for return safely returning to work, human-focused ideas for a new workplace, smart, biz, uh, smart building strategies, getting safely to and from the office, well-being and resiliency and hope. Next slide, please. So as uh, Daryl mentioned, I'm, I'm one of the architectural principals in the UK for Stantec with a responsibility for um, the commercial and education sectors. Stantec are a multidisciplinary consultancy 
covering buildings, infrastructure, water, community development in the United Kingdom. And there are tw some 23,000 people globally across over 400 locations. Um, I'm speaking as the commercial workplace lead. Stantec undertake hundreds of workplace projects globally for our clients each year. Next page, please. The pandemic has caused us to stop, reflect and plan for a new world. Safety, well-being and choice have all become key. But how do we implement change? What will our workplaces look like? Next slide, please. Stantec believe in research and benchmarking and have developed our workplace transformation survey to gain insights into what the future of workplace might look like. The result of this survey is our Getting Back to Business guidebook, which I'll talk more about as we go through the presentation. For the survey, we canvassed over 130 selected clients across industries globally. Over 48% of those had over a thousand employees. Armed with this information, companies can design and implement forward thinking solutions as the workforce is reintroduced to the workplace. Next slide, please. Like many on the call, we were keen to discover whether staff were anxious regarding their return to the workplace. We found an ability to collaborate face to face even beyond the fairly prolific use of teams now, and the ability to socially interact, even staying two meters apart, were key to most respondents. Next slide, please. 86% of our respondents said sir, uh, working from home would continue after the pandemic, with 82% saying the trend will drive long-term change. You can see the likely splits in terms of days per week on the indicated slides at the top in the two, um, two graphs. Our own office will reopen with a blend of working from home, uh, smaller groups, shift working, and other opportunities to change the working day going forward. Next slide, please. Top concerns for those returning, proximity to others, Two thirds of respondents shared that as their top concern. Sanitation, safety and security. 50% had their views changed on working from home. Many, me included, always, always felt that that was a, a, something that I'd rather not have done, but I'm, I'm starting to get used to it now. And the major impact on the size of offices, how offices will change to deal with short-term social distancing, and longer term changes to work patterns and how people want to work in the future. Next slide, please. How do we re-enter the workplace safely? We need to keep our number one asset, our staff, safe. Stantec, as part of our Getting Back to Business Guide, looked at this in depth and we developed a number of things that we could consider. Next slide. We all know our workplaces will be different. Less numbers of staff at any one time, safety, wellness protocols, cleaning, all going to be part of the next normal. Across many of our own offices and those of our clients, we have undertaken analysis of, of the floor plates that we work on to identify changes to seating, sanitation stations, movement and circulation within the office, and protocols for booking and having meetings. Next slide, please. In terms of indoor air quality, whilst data on the exact nature of the pathogen continues to develop, Stantec's mechanical engineering teams, working with industry partners, have looked at strategies to, to manage and improve air quality going forward for our return. If outdoor meetings aren't an option, whenever the weather turns back to more British standard, and you have to be inside, some options to consider are changing filters in the AHU equipment, performing air quality assessments, and increasing the concentration of outdoor and relief air. Some others are indicated on the right-hand side of this slide, 
Um, I would ask that you're nice to me in any questions that you have on these, remembering that I am an architect, um, but certainly can get more information from colleagues if it's something you're interested in. Next slide, please. This pandemic has shifted the how, when, and where of work. Where do our staff work? When and who gets to choose? Our research and guide looks at the expectations that our employees will have of their post-COVID workplace. Next slide. You can see from the single word responses from the survey how staff responded about what they miss most. The size of the response and the frequency is indicated on the, the size of the, of the word. People coming out top, yearning to reconnect to what they miss most, each other. Social, another one. Next slide, please. What choice, work, uh, what choice in the workplace actually means? More flexibility in family time. Wine, also a popular response. Next slide, please. If we have learned anything from the greatest work from home experiment that's ever been, it is many of us can not only work effectively remotely, but also have the desire to do so to some degree or another. The diagrams show the shift in thinking to a greater level of diversity in where we work. The two bars on the um, right hand side of the slide indicate in yellow pre-pandemic how most people felt drawn to the office but yet post-pandemic how a completely different mode of working both a blend of office and home-based work will develop next slide please so how does that manifest itself in a day of our lives going forward from starting our working day at home, doing some emails, just catching up, having an early coffee with your breakfast, then moving to a, a local coffee shop for a call, ensuring that you're socially distanced, and then maybe attending a pre-booked meeting space in the office. Our routines will undoubtedly change. Next slide, please. The technologies exist to allow this to happen. Smart buildings, are with us all and can be developed and the technology is out there. This can be applied both inside and outside of the office, how staff arrive, how they travel to work, how they book rooms and how they store their facilities. Next slide, please. How do we get to the office? Now, Daryl mentioned that there's different systems and strategies going on across the UK at the moment. Some are traveling to, to work with, by car. Um, many, um, like myself, will be using public transport to get into some of the major cities. And there is a concern with using the tube or public transport. How will that work? How will you socially distance? You can see on the image whether we're doing the queuing that many of us are used to now outside our supermarkets or indicators of electronic flow um, with a red light to say, just stay by your car until the uh, swell of people at an entrance slows down. As part of our getting back to business, we look at this in more detail. Next slide, please. Stantec have been working with Harvard School of Business, uh, sorry, of Public Health over the past two years on whether workplace design focused on health and well-being would produce physical, emotional, and cognitive improvements we should look at developing holistic health. This also includes the use of biophilic design, a topic which uh, would warrant its own webinar uh, and more details of which exist in our guide. Next slide, please. In terms of resiliency and hope, resilient organizations see workplace and colleagues as places of safety, support and trust. Yet, whilst we are all in this together, Everyone's situation is different. Every office will have unique challenges and we must ensure that we are cognizant of this in our planning and strategies. Next slide, please. Deloitte have identified three critical phases of a crisis. Respond, recover and thrive. 
In terms of the work that we've done, Stantec proposed three categories for returning to the workplace. Expanding the response team, engaging specialists to support you, communicating with clarity to our staff and to our clients, providing clear information and alleviating concerns, and design for all, leveraging the power of design to respond to our needs and concerns. Next slide, please. So to some real examples, some of the Stantec offices have returned to work. In the UK, we're not looking to start having our staff coming back to our offices until at least early July. Um, and our offices are, are sort of dotted across the United Kingdom. We've over 20 across the country. Um, we are developing strategies for work, for education, healthcare, and a number of other core sectors within, within our organization. And these will be rolled out to clients. Our Denver office is the thing that you can see on the screen now. Outside, welcoming, and everybody excited to come back. You can see the proliferation of signage, ensuring that people are clearly demonstrating where their flow will be, where they will move, and emphasizing the fact to just try and stay safe, clean, and aware. Next slide, please. Moving inside, imagery and signage that we're now used to in terms of social distancing, markers on the ground, ensuring that the receptionist is sufficiently separated from anybody coming into the building and is protected. In terms of the meeting spaces, again, greatly reduced numbers in the meeting spaces and a proliferation of hand sanitizers and then bins where you can equally uh, and very quickly get rid of any tissues and things like that. Next slide, please. And then moving through the building, you can see more signage. The meeting room spaces are all booked offline or online, sorry, and uh, can be uh, determined in terms of how many people can be used for them. On the bottom corner, you can see some of the, the systems that are in place for actually not uh, touching handles, but actually hands free to be able to open and close doors. And again, the idea of trying to, to clean and, and maintain uh, sanitation where possible. Next slide, please. More interior signs and more interior spaces. Again, we don't expect this to be the, the, the normal forever, but this is the short term issue to help our staff come back to work safely. You can see on the lower side, on the lower images, some of the hands free door pulls that you can use with your feet. And then again, toweling and sanitation, whether it be gels, sprays that help keep those hands clean. Next slide, please. And then whenever you're moving between floors, whenever you're using lifts, the aspect that in lifts, we've got small uh, towel dispensers that can actually, um, you can use to cover your finger when you're touching the button. Equally, um, you can use your the back of your elbow if you're more proficient in that. Um, and again, able to bin it directly. And you can see the image on the right-hand side, the flow of people and the markers on the ground that allow you to navigate the one-way systems that are put into place in our offices. Again, to mitigate that aspect of people having to cross. In terms of the interior spaces, again, much as you would find in a normal kitchen, ensuring that everybody remembers to wipe, wash, and uh, ultimately win. Next slide, please. From our Getting Back to Health documentation, which is another one of our brochures that we've started to find out to clients, uh, again, major signage for healthcare facilities, demonstrating um, the ability to uh, move through buildings, but ensuring that people keep their safe and um, uh, uh, distance of two meters. Next slide, please. Some of these will be very familiar to some on the call. Um, these are the possible no touch solutions that are now starting to come out in the market. Again, we've looked at these and are starting to instigate these across a number of our office spaces. Again, whether it's replacement, whether it's reconfiguration, but offering the ability for people to actually utilize some facilities such as the toilets without having to um, touch a whole series of handles. Next slide, please. And then again, just imagery of where those might be installed, whether it be in the door, whether it be in the floor, and then hand sanitizers again, located at the tops of stairs where you might've been touching handrails. 
Next slide, please. A lot more detail exists in our Workplace Transformation Guidebook, Getting Back to Business. Um, I'd love to go into it in more detail, but obviously we're limited for time. But please contact me to discuss further or to get a copy of that and sent through to you. Next slide. Thank you for your attention and putting up with my IT issue at the start. And please stay safe on your return to the next normal. Thank you, Aaron. Um, that, that's great. I love the photos in there. Simon, I think we're having slight issues with Dowell's um, Wi-Fi, so if you'd like to take yeah. over from here. No problem at all. I thought it was my Wi-Fi and I was starting to panic myself. So uh, so thanks very much and uh, and as, uh, hopefully we'll get um, uh, Daryl back. Um, thank you, Aaron. Um, it's really great to hear um, from a large company's approach to the return to work to the office. And to be honest, our experience um, is not very much different, uh, but is clearly scaled down. Um, I'm, I'm Today is not meant to be a panacea for the effective return for post-COVID-19 uh, office, uh, but a run through of challenges and the thoughts that we've had over the past four weeks um, and with, while we are working towards a return to the office. Um, it may be that we're doing the wrong things um, or we've made the wrong decisions, uh, but hopefully it will help um, you give you some idea um, to, of things to think about, uh, particularly for the SME members who are out there. I um, thought it would be worthwhile just to give you a, a feel for what we are. We're a, SME company, um, we're a civil and structural transportation company, consultancy company. Uh, we're generally based in Scotland. We've got 75 staff um, um, who are employed by the company. We have no contractors or self-employed people. Um, we have four offices um, based in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Aberdeen, and what I uh, sometimes jest as being our overseas office in Leeds. Um, but through the diverging times and the difference in approach, um, they have actually been like two different countries uh, to try and organize. So it's been a bit of a challenge for that. Um, our Edinburgh office um, is generally uh, is an old Georgian Newtown building, not open plan. Glasgow is similar. Um, Aberdeen's more open plan, uh, but it's based on an old school building and we have a serviced office in Leeds. So, so a very different sort of layout to what Aaron was talking about. So if I could have my first slides, Please check now. So unfortunately, um, we've had to furlough about 15% of our staff um, um, and uh, mainly our office staff and uh, apprentices. Um, we currently have uh, most of our, uh, of, of our staff uh, working from home, um, although a few are still staying in the office. Um, those that can easily work, uh, walk to the office or have private cars and can car park in the car park and generally these are people who have actually not got their own internet um, uh, at all at home, uh, which has actually surprised me somewhat. Um, but uh, we've got the benefit in Edinburgh of the, uh, the parking charges being suspended in the street as well, um, so they can park outside on the street. Um, we have set the, the staff um, up to working remotely from their own machines in the office. Um, so uh, they remotely log in and work from their actual their work computer. This means that all the software that is based on the computer um, um, and the licenses, etc., are, are retained within the office machines. Um, and this allows our data management software to be included as well. Um, and hence the QA systems and everything work well together with that. The staff um, have been uh, set, have set up their own offices uh, in, the, in the house, um, generally using their own computers or um, have borrowed one of our spare computers from the office. Um, um, but most of them have brought their big screens home with them. Um, to help them work. Um, but this does mean that they're working on their kitchen tables, their partners are working from home too, uh, and there may also be children trying to homeschool. So internet um, and uh, broadband uh, is a big challenge for them, as well as uh, the keeping the, everybody under control. Uh, but, so um, this is a, actually a photo of, of my working um, arrangement that I'm currently sitting at at the moment. 
Um, you can see I'm working from a, a laptop. The sun um, was streaming into the eyes. Um, I'm sitting on my dining chair. Um, and uh, uh, But I think this is probably one of the better setups we have in the office. Um, and, uh, and, and I've got the, the benefit of my son's now 18, so I don't need, need to worry about him holding schooling. Um, and I'm sure a majority of you are in a similar situation. Um, communication, as we've uh, been working at home, uh, we think is key uh, to try and keep in touch with staff. We split all our staff down and working um, into the working and the furlough teams, um, and into teams and the directors. We have each director in charge of the team. Um, these have so, and, they, and through that we have social events, uh, and uh, we are also allows us to have one-to-one -one partial care with any individual staff who's having a problem. Um, I do a morning blog uh, every morning. Um, I'm sure everybody's bored to see it, but uh, what it does is it keeps me uh, uh, and the staff abre abreast of what, what were the, the office thinking as with the, the changing government announcements that are coming out. Um, and this also allows me to make sure that I have a virtual open door for people that have got a problem. Um, the the long-term effects of the staff uh, of working uh, in these substandard uh, locations is a bit of a worry. Um, and as we, we extend this period, um, there's also a worry is the employment law implications um, of the home working going beyond six months. Uh, we've been working pretty well uh, in the office uh, and delivering information out as intended. But as time goes by, I am generally uh, worried um, and wondering how productivity uh, is, being, is, is affected uh, and how the long term we can keep up our delivery process. So if I could have next slide, please. So ultimately, um, we um, we would really, really rather return to the office. Um, and as a part of our plans uh, to see what challenges we will face, uh, we also have done a, a, a similar to Aaron, have done a, a survey um, of our staff using SurveyMonkey. Um, I managed to get a 100% return rate. I managed to uh, uh, hit them uh, to make sure that uh, we got them all back. So it was giving me the full information of everything that was uh, needed um, for a return to work. And this obviously included our furloughed staff. Um, we, were, uh, we were asking some fairly personal questions. Um, and so we declared that they were personal and confirmed that the information would only be used for the, uh, the COVID uh, return to work pre preparations and for no other reason and would never be held beyond that point. Um, now, please, when I'm saying this, please remember the majority of our staff are based in Scotland. Um, so. Um, this relates to Nicola's uh, easing of rules rather than Boris's easing rules. Um, and our schools generally uh, break up earlier um, at the end of June. So Scotland is not planning to, for any children to go back to school before the summer break. Um, so we asked um, um, if they had children at a nursery, primary or secondary school. Um, if, they, uh, if they had, um, what would be their intentions for childcare over the summer holidays? Um, if they had vulnerable people or uh, very vulnerable people in the household, or indeed were vulnerable people themselves, um, what their normal uh, mode of transport would be to the office, and then if they would, if they couldn't use that, what was their alternative? And also, uh, we asked uh, whether it would, it would be safe to return to work, or whether they felt if it was safe to, would they be willing to return to work? Um, the responses were interesting, uh, and indeed the staff were very open um, to their personal situations, so that was really useful. The good news was that 83 percent of uh, the staff were willing to return to work with a majority of the 17 percent saying they would be but um and the the, the the buts were ranging from why we're working at home pretty well as we are uh, to um i would only come in if it was safe to do so by public transport um we've also uh found out that we've got 43 percent of our staff who have got child care issues that we needed to consider with so uh, with nearly half the staff um worried about schools, then that could be a, a real problem. Um, I, uh, the, the question was relating to um, the summer holidays. Uh, summer, uh, this is a, a word cloud, as Aaron showed. Um, and this was the sort of the words that were coming back, the one words uh, that were coming back when our questions about how uh, they would keep with it. And you can see that the vast majority of people were relying upon um, their grandparents, um, private nurseries, um, and in a lesser extent, uh, their families, um, and plus their own holidays. Um, to cover childcare during the summer holidays. Um, so that it really is important that we, we, can, we, we take cognizance of the fact that childcare uh, will be a driver uh, to the full return to work, um, uh, or, or indeed a uh, change in the societal habits um, that have been developed up to now. 
So the results and the details contained within the questionnaire have been very enlightening. Uh, we will allow this, and this will allow our specific requirements uh, for each member of staff to be considered uh, as we develop a personalised return to work strategy for the various offices. Uh, next slide, Chetna, please. So we have considered uh, the responses to questionnaire in, in pulling together our return to work documentations. Um, we've uh, had to consider the effect of the extended home working to the uh, individual. Um, and we, we understand that they're really going to need to have a holiday uh, when they return to work. Uh, we consider that this re the return to the new normal will actually be more difficult to adapt to uh, for the staff than, than, break it, than going into a uh, lockdown. Um, and so we must take care with the staff to, um, uh, to nurture them and to help them develop uh, what the new normal will be for each and every single one of them. Um, despite the return to results of the questionnaires, I still think that we will have a reluctance to, to actually return to the office. Uh, we will need to develop uh, our flexible working strategies to help our staff to settle into the new work. One particular concern um, is the uh, local uh, public transport system. Um, these sort of things that uh, Aaron was talking about, um, how will they be developed and how comfortable will our staff be with the varying restrictions applied by the rails or the bus companies? Um, we have restricted car parking at the back of our office, as I mentioned before, um, but generally this is for directors and associates. But what we're going to do is we're going to encourage those directors and associates um, um, who can cycle, walk uh, or run to work. Uh, I can assume you, assure you're running, it's not going to be my one, um, to, start to encourage uh, more um, space within the uh, start, staff car park to ensure that those that can't uh, uh, get in safely through public transport can use their private cars. Um, uh, we can we can support a level of home working for a significant amount of time, and the the whole demographic of home working, uh, as Anne says, will change now as we as we confidence has grown uh, with regards to working from home. Um, but consideration will be needed uh, in relation to the the display screen as equipment regulations, um, an assessment of of uh, what they need to have, um, and some um, of, of staff may not be able to develop a reasonable a uh, safe working station at home um, uh, to accommodate our long-term home working. So we have to consider these things. Um, we have looked at all our offices and determined uh, how we can open and operate the offices safely, and I'll just come to that in a second. Um, but many of the good practices on communication and working as a team uh, we have developed in the lockdown will need to continue. Although in reality, we, have, we should have been doing that up to now, uh, but sometimes through the hectic uh, nature of running an SME, uh, we do forget. The communication and chatting between individual staff has increased and uh, a really good morale has developed uh, and we need to nurture this for the future. So uh, next slide Chetna, please. So uh, finally a few considerations we have made to our office um, and these have been by no means exhaustive uh, but some of the things that we've considered. Um, on the drawing there um, is a partial, um, it's, it's broken down somewhat um, but it's a partial um, uh, look at our offices um, when, when the original picture was done, the, uh, the, the circles were in fact circles, um, so it's been extended. So it's just to let you, to, to let you know about that. But we've identified um, uh, each individual working space, um, the radiuses around them, um, how we can uh, um, accommodate people. Um, the, the, green, it's, uh, the light green shows um, seats that can be occupied. Um, we also uh, need to get uh, staff to their seats effectively. Um, and also be able to enter the room um, to see if they have conversations on projects or similar. You can see in some of the rooms, particularly the one in the top right hand there, you can hardly stand at the door and speak to without uh, uh, intervening within the two meter radius. So we have to consider these, some of these things. Um, so um, some, of the shape, some of the rooms are in such a shape that we can't actually, we can only get one person in. Um, so we'll continue to, continue to need to use Teams and other um, video conferencing procedures still just to work locally within our office. Um, um, so some of the considerations that we've had to think about, um, we've got um, office cleaning um, is one thing that we, we've been talking about. Um, the, the current cleaners um, used to do a minimal clean, they'll have to come in and do a lot more um, and that will obviously be a higher cost. Um, there's also a, a need for um, uh, the company to develop a, a clear desk policy and we've considered deep cleaning um, a lot of the research says a deep clean is not necessary, but we think it will give the, the staff that, that confidence to return to work uh, well, and added confidence. 
Um, we'll we'll have a strict uh, regime for people coming into the office um, that won't be able to that. Uh, so uh, we won't allow people without uh, or without bookings to come into the office. Um, and we'll also have to consider access and egress. We will not be able to put in the one-way systems that um, Aaron shows because with a Georgia Newtown office, we only have one office, uh, one stair. So the, the stair has to be, we have to pass on the stair. So we'll have to use the landings in that way. Um, so we have to think about in more detail exactly what's happening. Um, we're going to develop waiting areas in the entrance hall to, so that people who have got uh, bookings to, to come into the office can stand safely while still maintaining uh, circulation. Um, common areas is a big worry for us. Um, we've got a tight kitchen and toilet areas. Uh, we consider banning the use of kitchens altogether um, and, let, and make all staff take what they need for the day in. But we decided that uh, we would uh, still allow the kettle to be used and apply a one person uh, at a time approach with hand washings before and after uh, the, using the kettle. Um, but we have decided that all microwave toasters, fridges and things will not be uh, used uh, during during the, this period of uh, return. Um, single use of toilets um, will also be needed. We've got small toilets uh, with maybe two cubicles in them. What we're going to do is only allow one person into the toilets at any one time. And we're going to have to try and organize a, a, a knock uh, a method of uh, assessing whether people are in. Um, not, not ideal, but these sort of things we've got to develop. Um, and clearly the risk assessment of that will be more dynamic than many of the others. Um, we've got no mechanical ventilations, but our old windows will be opened and uh, to allow a flu through the air. But once the uh, Scottish winter kicks in, we'll see how that happens. Uh, we may need to buy the company, uh, the staff company hoodies to keep them warm. Um, so um, we've uh, uh, agreed that fire evacuation drills will be postponed. Um, we've uh, agreed that um, the when we do have a, a, a call, uh, a, a fire alarm, um, that we'll do those so safely um, and to balance the, the risk effect of social distancing and the other. Um, and our assembly points have got um, room to allow that social distancing. But these are the sort of things we've had to think about. Um, as Alan shows, we've provided wipes, hand sanitizers, um, surface cleaners and paper towels throughout the office. Not quite as smart as uh, Aaron's, but nevertheless, uh, they're going to be provided throughout the office. Um, we've also thought about the use of uh, multi-use machines like photocopiers, uh, plotters and the like. Um, particularly those with uh, touchscreen uh, controlled equipment. Um, and so we, um, we will, uh, we've provided um, wipes uh, for that to be used before and after the regime. Um, finally, um, our general construction PPE regimes had to be changed. Um, we used to have a common store of PPE. Uh, what we've decided to do is that we'll have individual retention of PPE. So gradually things that we're having to think about changing our processes. Um, and, uh, and finally, you know, um, the, the specialist uh, COVID PPE, fire face masks, surgical gloves, et cetera, um, we will be providing, we have got them available, um, but we will amend our processes as construction sites amend their processes um, and our staff are uh, going to them. So um, in summary, um, we've had to use the guidance of uh, the UK government um, and other sources develop uh, strategies for returning to the office. In fact, the Stantec uh, documentation is very useful for that sort of purpose. Um, and uh, adapting to ourselves and adapting. Uh, but in fact, this will be a learning as we go. Um, we have provided all this information to the staff um, for their input um, and agreement well before we intend to return to work. Um, and in fact, some of our staff's partners um, are working the front line and are able to give first-hand experience and uh, practical commentary on our proposals. Um, so that brings me towards the end of my, 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 my talk. But um, as I've always said, um, our only asset is our staff. So fundamentally, uh, we really need to keep them safe and feeling safe um, and, and happy to come back into the office. So thank you. Thank you, Simon. And apologies I uh, dipped out earlier on. I think the Gremlins are with us today. Um, very detailed and, and some great advice on there. Uh, please keep sending your questions in. We've got a few questions in, so, so keep sending those in. Uh, I've got a one question here about um, the size of offices because obviously a lot of offices uh, are small um, and shared areas are particularly a problem and, and Simon you touched that on, on that already. Um, Aaron how are you finding this when your offices reopened in the States these shared areas because they're obviously an area of concern toilets kitchens etc how have you dealt with that has that been shut have they been shut generally or is it uh, just being managed sensibly? 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. And, and actually, Stantec, across all those offices that I mentioned, um, some of them are huge, um, but quite a lot of them have got, you know, eight or 10 people in them. And so it's it, it's not dissimilar in many ways to um, Simon's strategies in terms of working in smaller confined spaces. Um, we've tended to do with it on a, on a case by case basis. So those offices that have started to, to open up or thinking about opening up, part of the analysis that our, our own internal workplace teams have been doing is exactly as Simon has, really mapping out the, the sort of circles of, of safety, um, the two meter distances, and actually identifying how we can manage the space most effectively. Um, we have, um, where there are a number of toilets, um, we have done similar things to uh, Goods and Associates in terms of if there's only two toilet cubicles, well, it's a, it's one in um, at a particular time. Um, kitchens have remained open, but again, it's a very similar strategy where you, you really wash your hands before you go in uh, and, and bring whatever uh, food you want to have, um, that, that sort of stays with you, uh, whether it's in a cool bag or something like that, trying to not have people using fridges and things in the short term until we get a better handle on it. The biggest thing is really just mitigating uh, the numbers of staff we have in the office at any one time. So um, if normally an office holds 50 people, uh, we might only have uh, 20 people in that office um, uh, for a part of the day, and then they're actually scheduled to, to leave and work from home for the rest of the day or for the rest of the week. So really mitigating the numbers that are in the space. Thank you. Anything to add on that, Simon? Yeah, I mean, the one, the one thing that we've uh, had a little bit of difficulty is our showers and our shower area. We've got a shower with, uh, where we keep all the, the clothes and our, and our towels, and we've generally kept three or four uh, different people's towels uh, in close proximity. And clearly, that's just uh, an absolute uh, recipe for disaster at the moment. Um, and so we're, we're going to have to make sure that um, the showers that uh, everybody takes to the shower and take away from the shower everything they need for that shower, which includes towels, etc., and and contain that within their own space within the office. So um, things that seem sensible at the time um, about having um, preparation of um, of the of wet clothes um, is is uh, something that we've had to had to consider. But uh, the the generalised towels at the back of the door um, in the shower room um, will is that going to have to stop. So um, as we're encouraging more people to cycle to work. Uh, we're discouraging them by having uh, more regimes in place to make it more difficult for them. Um, but I think uh, we'll have to look and uh, see how that changes over time. Thank you. We've had a, a slightly related question coming as well about um, ventilation because a lot of office blocks, um, the, the air conditioning is controlled by landlords um, and some of the offices may not be uh, being attended. Um, so what's the advice, and possibly to Aaron on this one because of your experience, where landlords control the, uh, the, the air conditioning and the temperature, and maybe to control overheads, they're turning it off or on in particular times of day, letting the ambient temperature, but obviously that's not very good if the, if the ventilation uh, is lower than it would normally be. Um, any advice on there on considerations on, on air conditioning control? Um. I, I seem to recall during my presentation, I expressly asked for no questions about the <laughs> about the uh, about the ventilation section. Um, I it it is a challenge, um, and clearly, and, and interestingly, our our one of our central London offices, the one that the architects reside in, that I'm in, um, it's an old building, and we have natural ventilated spaces. Um, but then uh, some of our other offices, and and certainly some of the bigger ones in the US, um, are fully mechanically ventilated. Um, it's it's really about dialogue um, with the with the uh, landlords that we have and actually some of the the clients that we have who are landlords um, that we've been advising and and it's it's pretty simple I think Simon mentioned that I mentioned it that that staff are our 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 number one concern they're our number one um, thought at all times. And actually, the, you know, we have to ensure that people feel comfortable to go back and are safe when they go back. And it doesn't it doesn't do a landlord any good to be sitting with a with a five story or 10 story office building with virtually nobody in it, um, because all that's going to happen is that in the long term, it's going to affect the psychology of, of people using that space. So it's about engaging with the, the landlords where you can um, and, and actually helping them 
in uh, some of the options and some of the discussions that that I that I mentioned. Um, and then if you do happen to, to own your own building, um, I think it's really bringing in uh, advice. And uh, it, it's not a suggestion that if you've got a, a small office that you need to shell out a lot of money in a, on a particular consultant to help you. But but many within the industry will have will have colleagues who will be able to give some sage advice in terms of the core things, whether that's as simple as just replacing filters um, and reducing the numbers of people, which then obviously reduces the the air requirements in the building. Um, but it is it is certainly a challenge, um, and I think probably as 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 time goes on in the next month or two, and we learn more about the particular characteristics of the pathogen and how it's spread because you know there's very different views on on how far it can it can migrate and how far it can exist um i think we'll be able to sort of refine suggestions and whether it's just sort of you know hepa filtering or whether it's some some more sophisticated um strategies i, I think we'll we'll manage that over time yeah just to add to yeah. that um, as i said our lease office is a as a service office uh, and we are still awaiting their um risk assessments um that they've had carried out for the ventilation and the ventilation system. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I think the, the fact that we've been waiting for that for about three weeks suggests that it's maybe not such an easy thing for them to do. So uh, I think it's really important that we try and make sure we get their risk assessments and how they, because as I said, we've just got one small office in a, in a large service office in Leeds. Um, so we're re really reliant upon um, their um, systems and their risk assessments to allow us to put our staff back in the office. Thanks, Simon. I think that's good advice to, to ask the landlords for the risk assessment on that. A question coming for you, Simon, here. Have you considered uh, changing shift patterns? Um, because obviously uh, both of you are speaking from, from cities, Edinburgh and London, which have different modes of transport, buses, trams, underground. Those are going to be hotspots uh, that people are very concerned about. Have you thought about changing shift, shift patterns and that flexibility? Because obviously people's uh, arrival times are going to be very uh, unreliable. Aaron? Oh. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, uh, 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 certainly. I think I mentioned um, that uh, shifts are, are something that we um, we have been looking at and, and truthfully haven't got to the bottom of yet. Um, it'll need further um, discussion with each of our, our um, staff members in each of our offices, but certainly speaking from our central London um office I, th I think one of the challenges that we have is that some people some people live fairly central to the office and some uh, as with many of the cities um, commute from from quite a distance outside i think in the short term we've already had some discussions with colleagues as to to a psychologically how they feel about going back to the office um and whether they would be comfortable doing that and how they would do that um and a few are lucky enough that it's an easy walk or a cycle um, but then cycling obviously brings all the issues of showering that Simon mentioned earlier on um, I think we've uh, come to the conclusion that um, it will be a case of we'll develop strategies whether it be in project teams um, we'll go in at certain place uh, at certain times um, whether that's just in blocks of days or part of days um, we're still refining and we haven't got to the bottom of it yet um, and then I think we'll we'll amend that over time because interestingly, one of the things that uh, I'm not sure if Simon felt the same. I think he might have mentioned it, but certainly during the lockdown, I think one of the the benefits has been actually the interaction between our whole office and our whole staff um, through Teams or whatever else has interestingly probably increased because often we're we're locked in our own little bubble of of project team or something else and don't really get to chat to the to the to the colleague around the corner um and actually having everybody on one screen at two or three times a week has actually really uh, i think helped our 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 interaction yeah i would i really i would really hope, uh, agree with you Aaron, on that one i think the teams and that that whole approach um has actually um improved communication um sounds ridiculous but uh yeah it, it certainly has um, as far as sh uh, uh, shifting um, and, and coming in and shift, um, generally our, our offices, uh, we run a, very, run a very flexible timekeeping anyway. Um, so we don't have people coming in all at nine o'clock or all at 8.30 or all at eight o'clock. Um, they tend to drift in and drift out. Um, but clearly we can't have them all sat in the office at the same time. We've 
uh, agreed that we we're going to do it on a day basis um, because I don't really want the idea of having to clean down if we did a morning for some people and an afternoon for others. Um, then the fact that you have to try and clean down um, work areas um, at lunchtime is not really our thoughts. So our thoughts are that we'd be coming in for a, maybe two days, um, two days on, um, three days off was uh, is our thoughts, um, and uh, done on the basis of teams and uh, um, with groups of people rather than rather than Microsoft Teams, but uh, with teams of people, um, so um, we all know what we're doing and when we're doing it. Um, so that's our thoughts. Thank you. Aaron, there's a lot of love coming through uh, for the Stantec guide. Is that available for people generally? Yeah, if if people can, um, we'll we'll sort it with Chetna, but my email was on the presentation. And if people contact me, um, we can certainly get something organized for that. That's not a problem. Um, no, or, so however you want to do it, either through through the ACE and then, and then give me the list, whatever's easiest. Thank you. Simon, you mentioned the, the people issues, and, and I think that's something that is foremost in everybody's mind because people are a bit wary of coming back. How have you handled the, the more sensitive and the more difficult conversations with people that, that sort of, you know, there's, there's different uh, views on the spectrum of people's um, uh, keenness for the lockdown to continue? How have you had those conversations, Simon? Yeah, well, that, that's really what I was trying to talk about with the sort of pastoral care that we can we can do through the um, through teams uh, and the like. And our and our and our group of uh, each each individual member of staff has got a director that is specifically looking after them. Um, and they're not necessarily waiting for uh, the questions to come to the directors. The directors are going out and asking and making sure um, that the uh, staff are happy what they're doing and how they're doing. I do think that we're going to get some people saying, I just want to work from home. Um, and, you know, um, if uh, they can provide um, a safe working environment for themselves and it works for the business, uh, we'll be open to that um, in the long term. And I think it's important that we do um, consider that actually the whole, there's going to be a whole paradigm change um, uh, in, uh, in the way we do work uh, and we, we use offices. Um, and I think if, as SMEs, we need to um, encourage and embrace that as well as the, the larger consultants. Um, and I think we need to try and think about how we best um, uh, deal with um, the, 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 the call of the, the Generation Z um, um, people. But you know, it's, 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 it, we've got to be able to make sure that we can understand people's concerns and take them forward. And so we, we do that on a one-to-one. -one. Um, I personally prefer to pick up the phone uh, than trying to do something on Teams. Um, because I think um, making a connection through the phone call um, is more uh, positive uh, in that way. But yeah, it's a one-to-one -one pastoral support needed. Thank you. Um, Aaron, I think you covered this in your presentation as well of the people issues. Is there any experience you've, you've come across from the, the, the opening of the offices in the States? Obviously, childcare issue is a big, big one that comes up as a, a, a problem. Yeah. Um, uh, much as, as Simon's slide indicated, the childcare is a, a, a big issue. It's the same in, in our offices, whether it's our London office or, or over in, in the States. Um, interestingly, many of the, of the, the, the States and the, and the provinces in, in the US and Canada were very quick to identify um, timeframes for um, ch childcare or school return and things like that. And, and many or some of them have identified that, you know, really clearly the schools aren't going to go back until September. So that's allowed their their parents or their carers um, a little bit more clarity as to trying to plan their, their strategies. But much as Simon said, um, you know, we stand to, uh, globally, but certainly in the UK, we've we operate a, a, a flexible office as well. You know, our guys are, are sort of working at different times and quite often with with different geographies, which make um, them working at, at different times more applicable, um, and we're just doing it as a as a case by case basis. And and we too, I think, will have people um, who will be sort of hamstrung by childcare issues uh, in the short term, and we'll have some people who, frankly, um, will be very very reticent to return to work in terms of the office. Um, maybe they're living slightly further afield. Or um, just uh, just I've, I've got used to the new normal, um, but I think it's it's all about and and we've both spoken about it. It's all about engaging with your staff continually, 
um, and really just trying to understand where their head's at and how they want to move forward and, and not having a rigid plan. I think that, you know, our plan, our getting back to work strategy and our plan, yes, it's something we write down, but it needs to be changing constantly and adapting as we move forward back into and back into the future workplace. I think that's a very good place to finish. Thank you, Aaron. I think we're out of time now. Many thanks for everybody for listening. We hope, hope you found this interesting. Thanks to our guests today. Um, I think we could have gone on longer with the questions that have come on. Aaron Taylor and Simon Innes of Stantec and Goodsons. Thank you for spending the time to put this together. Really appreciated. We've recorded this webinar and we'll send a link later today so that you can refer back to it and it will stay on the ACE website, of course. And we'll also send the slides across to which will have Simon and Aaron's contact details. See you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.